Making your mobility scooter more accessible, thumb speed control. The reason why I'm making this is because my father had a stroke and he only has ability in one hand. And also this machine is extremely fast and he would not be able to handle it at high speeds. In this video I am going to show you how I came up with the idea, uh, my engineering files, how I 3D printed the piece, and I'm also going to supply you with the STL files. Legal disclaimer, this video is for entertainment purposes only. With that out of the way, please take a moment to like and subscribe. It's free and it'll help me out. Okay, let's get started right now. How this works is pretty simple. Obviously, you push forward and the machine goes forward. Pull backwards, the machine goes backwards. This is the engineering files that I used to create this and it shows how the part functions. Okay, let's go over some of the key design concepts here. Keep in mind, I've skipped over most of the design because this is a video on the actual unit and not how to design a part. Um, so let's go here. This piece here clamps on to the handlebar. This piece here clamps on to the throttle pot or the thumb actuator or whatever you want to call it. And this piece here links the two of them together. So the longer this shaft is, the faster the, the scooter will go. So what I did is I made a few of these and kept making them smaller, smaller, and smaller uh, to control the speed, the maximum speed that the scooter will go. So as you push this in, it triggers the uh, throttle pot. What's not shown in, in is I have a special pin that fits into here and has a cotter pin that goes in the bottom and it actually locks in just by pushing it and the throttle pin or the cotter pin secures it. Also what I'm not showing in this video is I put a couple of sleeves around here just to limit the speed a little bit more because ideally what I'd like is 16 kilometers an hour and this unit will do 22 which is too much for my father. Okay let's get on to 3D printing it. So now what I have, I loaded my files into my slicing program, which is a flash forge. They're on the bed. That's the surface that's on the bed. That's what it looks like from the top view. So then we have to start slicing. Then it asks a few questions, which extruder we always use left for this material. And we want to go into infill because I need it to be a little bit stronger and I don't want it snapping, I want it at 45% infill. So it's about half, half thickness, not full thickness. And you hit slice, you wait a couple seconds for the slicing program to go through, and then it'll, it'll give you a file that the uh, 3D printer can print on. So I take a look at the preview, and you can zoom in and you can see exactly where the 3D printer and what the lines look like. So that's what my part actually looks like. And it blends together and melts in. And the cool thing is you can see this in layers. So you can bring the layers down. All the way to nothing and as it comes up. And that's how it prints. There are, there is reasons why I laid them out in a certain pattern. And there's also reasons why they're orientated and certain design features are in a certain spot, but that's for another video. Now this is not tightened down or anything yet, but seems to be working just fine. Slight adjustments here and there, everything needs to be tightened, but kind of seems exactly what I want here. Okay, let's see how this works. 
my father only has one hand, so it'll kind of be like I'm doing the same thing he does. But he always goes full throttle. That brings it up to, it needs to be a little bit shorter. I'm going too fast. 18, I'd like to see this around 19. I'd like to see this around 16. stops pretty good. Can I go backwards? Uh, backwards is a crawl. Okay, now it's time for a couple of engineering changes to increase the reverse speed. I'm currently on my sixth version of this, and I think I have the final size down. Uh, it's 3.5 inches. I made this guy a little bit different this time. I made it so it snaps in, and it will not followed by accident. I also put this curve in here because when I reverse um, it's hitting one of the nuts on the back of these guys here. Uh, also I did a relief on the bottom to give it more flexibility in this axis. Then I put a little washer on there, put a cotter pin in here and we're good to go. Let's see how the reverse works. Oh, so much better than before. Just the right pace. And it's... No jamming. Still up to 17. Up to 20, that's no good. The next round of testing and repairs will have to be put on hold for a week or so until the snow decides to go away. So this here is what the thumb action looked look like. It's limited by this little spacer here again. By adding that small spacer in, it prevents the scooter from going over 16 kilometers an hour on level flat ground. I'm glad to see that you enjoyed the video. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the comments section below. I will also be including the STL files in a link below that you can download and 3D print yourself. Disclaimer, this is for entertainment purposes only. If you got any value out of this video, please like and subscribe. It's free and it'll help me out. Thank you for watching the video and have a good night.